Good day, I'm Norman Wahlberger. We've been talking about propositional logic and last time inference rules. Today we're going to talk about identities in propositional logic, which are another set of tools that we can use to manipulate arguments from a logical point of view. So there's actually quite a lot of them that we've already seen. Uh, the main point here is that the algebra of Boole, which is this purely algebraic mod 2 kind of arithmetic, really suffices to demonstrate all of these identities. And in fact, there's quite a lot more that we can probably investigate that are quite interesting. So propositional logic, we're concerned with these sort of basic connectives and or not implies and equivalents. And there's many identities, and they could all be established with the algebra of Boole. So uh, in this context, equivalence, this one here, is really just identity of Boole polynumbers, so represented arithmetically by an equal sign. So let's go through some examples. For example, the idempotent laws. One of them says that P or P is equal to P, and the other one is P and P equals P. Okay, and one of the proofs, well, P or P, we have to convert that into the algebra of Boole. So we have P plus P plus the product P squared, and this reduces to just P. And over here, P and P, that's the product, so P squared, and P squared is equal to P in the algebra of Boole. So these are, are almost immediate. And generally speaking, verifying the standard identities with the algebra of Boole is actually always very simple. So let me quickly remind you about some of the other identities that we've already seen in the context of electrical engineering and the Boolean algebra that's traditionally used to structure logic gate design and so on. So it's really the same story, the same laws are appearing here, although the context is actually quite different. We're talking about propositions coming from real life and trying to construct arguments uh, with these propositions rather than creating uh, electronic circuits that uh, do various things for us and inputs zeros and ones. But algebraically, the, the context is very similar because the Boolean algebra of electrical engineering is very close to this um, propositional logic format with the ands and ors. So the distributive laws, we've seen them many times. The identity laws, P or F equals P, P and true equals P, and P and F equals F, P or true equals true. These are the domination laws, these are identity laws. The double negation law, that not not P is equal to P, complement laws, P and not P is false, while P or not P is always true. De Morgan's laws, where we're negating uh, conjunction or disjunction, so not P or Q is not P and not Q, while not P and Q is not P or not Q. So in all cases, these can be verified very easily with the algebra rule, and I'll leave it to you as an exercise to do that. Okay, so the point is, you just convert the left-hand side and the right-hand side into an algebraic expression, just using the Algebra of Boole addition and multiplication. Okay, that's all. And then you just reduce them to the Boole polynumbers, and the left hand side equals the right hand side if you've done it correctly. Now, I do want to spend a little bit more time on some slightly less familiar laws, starting with the absorption laws. Two of them. The first one is that P or P and Q is P, and the other one, P and P or Q is P. So the strategy is let's take the first one, take the left hand side, P or P and Q. Well, that's P or PQ because P and Q is the same as PQ. The and is represented by the multiplication in the algebra rule. But now we have to replace this or, right? In the electrical engineering situation, that would be a circle sum. Here it's represented by this V like wedge. But the OR is the first one plus the second one plus the product. It's P plus PQ plus P times PQ, but this is also PQ, so it cancels with that one, and we just get P. That proves the first one. The second one, we have P and P or Q. 
The AND is represented by the product. The OR is represented by P plus Q plus PQ. We expand this out, we get P squared is P, PQ, and P times this is another PQ. Again, we just get P. Here is a very important identity, which is less familiar to electrical engineers because the implication plays a much more subdued role in the logic gate story. In fact, sometimes it doesn't really appear at all in standard treatments. But the identity is that P implies Q is the same as not P or Q. So we've talked about this before, but uh, it's important to really understand this fully. This is a conditional identity. It allows us to replace this implication, if we want, with this, this OR together with this NOT. Okay, let's prove it. Let's take the right-hand side, NOT P or Q. NOT P is 1 plus P in the algebra of Boole. So we have to take 1 plus P plus Q plus the product of 1 plus P and Q, because that's how you represent an OR. 1 plus P there, the Q here and the Q there will cancel and we'll just have an additional PQ. And we recognize that 1 plus P plus PQ is just the algebra of Boole formulation of P implies Q. So these are indeed equal. Okay, so there is, as I've said, a big overlap with the Boolean algebra of circuit analysis and this Boolean algebra in the context of propositional logic. That's one of the things that makes propositional logic interesting from the point of view of an electrical engineer, because they see that there's a, a sort of corresponding theory. What we're saying is that both of those theories actually are subsumed by the more powerful and larger scale algebra of Boole. Okay, so let's just remind you about that. So uh, the AND operation on the propositional logic side what we're representing algebraically, it's just the ordinary product in the algebra of Boole. And in electrical engineering terms, that's the AND gate, represented by an AND, and that's the, the picture of the gate. The OR, P or Q, in the propositional logic framework, is represented by us as a circle sum. Not an ordinary sum, the ordinary sum is the exclusive OR of the algebra of Boole. This circle sum represents the inclusive OR of the propositional logic or the electric uh, engineering convention with an OR gate uh, pictured like this. And not P, well, uh, formally we call that P with a bar over it, and that's uh, represented by not P, this gate here with a triangle and a little circle representing the negation. Okay, but uh, the implication, which is the sort of new thing that figures very prominently in the propositional logic story, the P implies Q connective, which in the algebra of Boole notation is 1 plus P plus PQ, this plays a lesser role in the logic gate story. So it's not a common logic gate. However, that doesn't mean that it doesn't play a role at all. It does play a role. So there is uh, sort of a standard terminology called an imply gate or maybe an imp gate, P imply Q. And here is one of the notations that's sometimes used in the logic gate community to represent P implies Q. And we can see why that makes sense because this looks like an OR gate and this little circle here suggesting that we're negating P. So it's not P or Q. And we know just from the previous identity that we've established that not P or Q is exactly the same as P implies Q. All right, so this is a reasonable symbol for P implies Q. But it is the case that this is less um, frequently studied. One of the reasons is because this as a gate is not symmetrical anymore. All the standard gates are symmetrical. Here you have to worry about which inputs are attached to which uh, input strings. Okay? And also there's the question of how do you actually create such a thing using transistors or something corresponding. So there's a connection, but it's a weaker connection when it comes to the implication between the propositional logic and the electronic engineering. Another very important identity, which is actually very useful in ordinary life, and often is a source of confusion, is 
the contrapositive identity, which asserts that these two implications are the same. P implies Q is the same as or equal to not Q implies not P. Let's see why. Let's have a look at the right hand side. Not Q implies not P. So not Q is 1 plus Q. Not P is 1 plus P. So we're talking about 1 plus Q implies 1 plus P. How do we represent that in the algebra of Boole? Well, it's 1 plus the first one plus the product of the two of them. Okay, what do we get? These two ones cancel, but there's a one coming here. So there's a one altogether. The Q here will cancel with this Q here. There will still be a P and there will still be a PQ. So altogether we get 1 plus P plus PQ, which we recognize is the same as P implies Q. So that's a proof of the contrapositive identity. And here's an example. The statement, if it rains, then I get wet, is equivalent to if I don't get wet, then it has not rained. Raining implies getting wet, so not getting wet implies not raining. So this is a very important uh, kind of identity because it actually appears in mathematics uh, many times. Sometimes if we want to prove this, it's more convenient to prove this contrapositive version, for example, that applies in a wide variety of different situations. So this is actually mathematically a very important identity. Okay, so here's another one that we've already seen before, but I want to extend it a little bit. So we might say this is the exportation identity. And this part here we've seen already, that P and Q implies R is equal to P implies Q implies R. So this was a way for us to try to prove an implication like this by adding Q to the list of premises that we may already have had. But now I'm asserting that in addition, these two are also equal to P implies R or Q implies R. So let me remind you of the proof. If we want to simplify this one here, we get PQ implies R, which is 1 plus PQ plus PQR. If we want to simplify this one, the Q implies R is 1 plus Q plus QR. P implies that becomes 1 plus P plus the product. And then that simplifies to the same expression, 1 plus PQ plus PQR. So the new thing now is this one here, P implies R or Q implies R. It's a little bit more complicated. So P implies R is 1 plus P plus PR. Q implies R is 1 plus Q plus QR. And we're taking an or. So that means we have to take the first one plus the second plus the product. Okay, so then you look through and you see what uh, happens. There's various cancellations. There's a 1 and a 1 here. They cancel. There's a 1 here, so there's a 1. The P here uh, cancels with that P there. The Q here cancels with that Q there. The PR cancels with that PR. The QR cancels with that uh, QR there. And what's left over is a PQ and a PQR. Uh, we get PQR from here and here. We also get it from P here and here. And we're also we get and we're also getting it from PQR. So there's three PQRs from here, uh, giving a total of a single PQR. So we get the same thing that we did in these other cases. So there's actually a sort of a triple of expressions there that are equal. Okay, so here are some additional exercises. And in the course itself proper, there will be some more exercises for you to to tackle some curious, interesting identities. So the first one is show that P implies Q implies R implies S is equal to PQR implies S. And maybe you can think about how you might generalize that. This next exercise is something of uh, exploration of some symmetric expressions in three inputs P, Q, and R. So here we have P and Q Q and R, R and P, and we're taking an OR of them. And the claim is that's the same as PQ plus QR plus RP. And here we are reversing the situation. We have P OR Q, Q OR R, R OR P, and we're taking the AND of those three things. 
And the claim is that we're getting something similar, PQ plus QR plus RP, plus also this additional symmetric cubic term, PQR. And here's another kind of symmetrical uh, thing, where we have P implies Q, and Q implies R, and R implies P. So because it's symmetrical in P, Q, and R, we expect the answer to be symmetrical in P, Q, R. That's going to be a Boole poly number, which is symmetrical. And it turns out to be 1 plus P plus Q plus R plus P, Q plus Q, R plus R, P. And you might like to, to check that. Okay, so great. We've established a bunch of inference rules that we can use and a bunch of identities that we can use to simplify logical expressions coming from propositional logic and to structure arguments to try to make deductions from premises. So these are key ingredients if you're taking a propositional logic course, typically in a philosophy department at a university. So you will be expected to memorize all these identities and inference rules and then apply them judiciously to various examples to try to find a way towards a desired conclusion. Now, that's all well and good, okay? But my approach is that I don't really want us to proceed too far down in this direction. So it's nice to have some contact with these inference rules and the identities because they are useful. Uh, we've seen that some of them are important in, in other areas of mathematics. For example, that contrapositive identity, very important. But generally speaking, I don't want to take the approach that we're going to memorize all these uh, sort of bags of tricks and then we're going to you know, be clever about applying them judiciously to take some big expression and somehow simplify it to where we want to go. What I would rather do is think about a more general approach, uh, a technology which doesn't require minute fussing around, and that just sort of hits the thing with some systematic, large-scale technology that will get where we want to go without having to be clever and having to memorize all kinds of previous things. So ideally, we would like our grade 9 student who is fluid with this algebra, and maybe even has a little computer program to help them simplify big expressions, be able to just apply that basic algebra to deduce or to verify very complicated arguments. So to do that, we have to take a step beyond the traditional philosophy course, and we have to investigate some more subtle issues uh, having to do with uh, making some connection with, with modern algebra also. So that's where we're going to be aiming for in our next uh, video or two. Hope you'll join me for that. I'm Norman Wahlberger. Thanks for listening.